Okay, so I've opened up Rhino and I've started up a new file from a template with whatever unit of measure, uh, measure doesn't really matter. And I'll head back here to the tutorial and uh, go ahead and start. So it walks us through starting a new model. And then we need to uh, create two solids that are spheres. And it specifically tells us to do it in the front viewport, which is important. And I want to do it like the tutorial does it so it's easier for you to follow along. Now over here, I can hold down my mouse and reveal different kinds of solids, such as the sphere. And then I want to go to the front viewport, just as they suggested. And if I have grid snap turned on, which you may see at the bottom of the screen, it's at the top in the Mac version, I can click here right on the origin and I can zoom out as I go and make a sphere that's yay big and then maybe come over here hit enter to repeat the previous command and make another sphere that's a little bit smaller. Uh, I accidentally had them overlap so I can just kind of drag that guy over slightly uh, so that it's a little, its position is a little more clear. Okay, great, so now we switch back to here. Take a look at the next step. Now it's telling us to rebuild this form. So initially the sphere doesn't have a lot of complexity that uh, we can monkey around with. And we're going to do uh, this great feature in Rhino, which involves just starting to type. So I don't need to click anywhere. I just start typing and rebuild. And you can see, at least on my screen, in the upper left-hand corner, it, it prompts me with a bunch of commands that I, that I might be spelling. And I'll hit rebuild. And then if you look back at the link, 8 and 8 and 3 and 3 is the, um, are the numbers that we want to use. We're not really going to get into what these mean, but just think about them as the number of divisions that make up the sphere. So now if I hit rebuild, you can see that this sphere has more of these uh, radial, these radiating lines from the center when compared to this sphere. So I click that one, enter to repeat the previous command, and I want to rebuild that as well so that they both have those new uh, amount of features. Okay, so we'll head back to here. It looks about the same. Now we're going to turn on control points. So back in Rhino, uh, I can see the control points look like this right here. It looks like a curve that has some little points that are sort of hovering up off the line. And uh, it wants us to start with this one first. So I'll turn on control points. And now I get this grid of points that are floating up off the surface. It's, it's more apparent in perspective. You can see how it looks like there's kind of a net of points that are outside the surface of the sphere. And what these let me do is uh, imagine that each of those points is exerting a sort of invisible magnetic force. Mm. And so it's causing that sphere to, to pull outward from the center. So I can grab some of these points and I can just start to move them around. And you see when I do that, I will effectively squash that surface. And in some cases, if I do this enough, it'll start to turn in on itself, which can actually cause technical problems. So I'll hit undo. And we're actually going to do this in a really specific way that they recommend. So you look down here and you can see they have us dragging from left to right. And they want us to grab these lower nine points. Uh, or maybe that's just six points. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing that they did. Left to right, grab those bottom six points. And then they have us type in a command called set PT or set point. Uh, they have us only set things in the z-axis, because we're going to be dragging this up and down in the three-dimensional space, and we want to align to the world. Don't worry about c-planes. So set points, and now you can see I'll be able to drag this thing up and down, and I want to get something that looks more or less like that, because we're trying to establish the place where the duck uh, sits on a flat surface. So I'll left-click to complete the command, and I can take a, a spin around my duck here and see that now it has like a little flat area on which it can sit. Uh, we can also do some freeform dragging. So here we're going to drag points to form the tail. And again, we're going to drag a box from left to right. Now, if I were to take just one of these points and to drag it off into space like this, you can see that I would have a lopsided sort of tail. So what we want to do is drag our box from left to right. And looking in the front viewport, there's actually multiple points in a straight line away from my eye right here. So if I look up here, you'll see that two points have been selected. And now I can come in here, zoom in and back out to get my space correct. And I can start to sort of drag that tail out if I want. 
you know, I could select some points here and sort of make it a little more, um, you know, just it, at this point, it's really an aesthetic thing. And I, I'll keep on referring back to my perspectival view to confirm that I like how that thing's coming together. Okay, so we've made our tail. Uh, they pretty much just say in here the same thing I said. You can get in there and select batches of points to, uh, to maintain the symmetry here and get this thing looking more and more duck-like. It, it sort of uh, wants us to flare out the chest. We could experiment with that as well. So let's say we were to take this set of points right here and then pull these out in this direction and so forth. Again, this is totally up to you what you want this to look like. So I'm going to call that good. Okay, back over here, it says hit escape repeatedly until the points turn off. So escape, escape, escape. Uh, let's see here. Oh, interesting. Because I'm currently recording a video, I can't really hit escape the way it wants me to do it. Let me see if I can figure this out. There we are. Okay, great. Hopefully you're still hearing the sound of my voice. Now back to our link and next. Now it has us flare out the beak a little bit, so we want to go back to Rhino, turn on control points for this guy here, uh, select a couple of beaky looking points by dragging a box, and I'm going to bring this straight out like that. And I might also select these points and give myself sort of a little caved-in spot so things don't look quite so mechanical. Okay, so that's starting to look duckier by the second. Hit escape a couple times. Head back to our link. So now it's going to do something, and this is where we'll start to diverge from the uh, tutorial. So here they have us drawing a line, and that line is actually used to cut two, be uh, two parts of the head apart, so we have a separate beak and head, and that can be used to make them uh, give them different coloration. We're actually not going to bother with that. We're going to skip right through to the part where we make the neck. Okay, so select the head and use cut plane. Let's go ahead and give that a try. So head, and then in the front viewport, I have to click here, I will type in cut plane. And now I can draw myself a little line that's going to represent, let's make that a little bit lower. Oh, too low. Okay, we'll go right here. This might be quite a fat neck, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll with it. Uh, so that gives myself a little plane that's perfectly scaled to the, uh, the size of the object that we had selected, because we're going to use this to sort of take a slice um, out of this object. I hit enter to complete the command. And then it tells us to go down there and to say trim. Okay, so the way that trim works is we want to deselect everything, type in trim, and you'll start to see prompts with certain commands. So it says, what is the cutting object? In that case, it's the cutting plane, hit enter. Then the object to trim, we want to pick the part of the object that we want to be deleted. So I'll click down here at the bottom, and that way I'll lose the bottom of the head, hit enter, and now I can select the cut plane and delete it. Now you can see here that my neck is starting to travel off into space a little bit, so I might reposition this head a little more up over the body itself. And now I'll do a, turn, a command that's called extrude CRV, or extrude curve. Extrude curve says, what curves would you like me to extrude? And I'm going to pick the circle that makes up the bottom of the head. Frequently, for uh, reasons I don't fully understand, it won't pick up the entire circle, so sometimes you have to go back in and complete the circle by selecting those points. Hit Enter, and then we drop that neck down until it is well within uh, the body as a whole. You don't want it to pop out of the bottom of the body, but you do want it to be nice and centered in the meat of that central area. And then let's check on what we do next. So here we've done the, uh, the trim, we've done the extrude curve command, and now we're going to use trim again in order to pop a little hole in the body itself. So I'll come back in here to the front viewport, and you may notice as I do this, if you're following along very precisely, it's going to help you to execute the commands in the same windows, in the same viewports as I do. So here I'll say trim, I'm in the front viewport, my cutting object is the cylinder, and then the thing to cut away is that uh, the, the neck as it falls on the, or rather the body where it falls in the interior of the neck. Enter to complete the command, and then delete that cylinder 
And now we should see I've got a nice little hole at the top and the bottom.